I've put my favorite titles up here in nonfiction, fiction, and science fiction. But pretend that you could only read one genre from now on. Who in the room would choose nonfiction? How about fiction? How about science fiction? I'd contend that those of you who chose nonfiction are particularly interested in the past. <laughs> those of you who love fiction care deeply about the present. And you all, like me, who chose science fiction, I'd propose you like to think especially about the future. <laughs> Ideal education requires all three of these perspectives. We must understand where we've come from as societies and build on the best practices refined over centuries. For children especially, to educate we must engage constantly in the moment. But the purpose of school is to prepare children for the future that's coming. So we must have a sense of what we want and what will happen. To answer that question of where are we going as a species, we have to reflect the fact that humans are on an exponential rise. As charted here in terms of world population and wealth per person, you see that for millennia things are basically flat. And then all of a sudden around 1800 there's this inflection and we shoot upwards. Most of us learned in school that inflection was caused by the Industrial Revolution. As shown here, we learned how to harness fossil fuels and other sources of energy for our dramatic benefit. The result was that we could feed far more people and provide a far higher quality of life. Today, each person on Earth consumes about 20,000 times the energy output of their own human body, directly and indirectly as we live our lives. And while each one of us gets the benefit of increasingly free physical work, we are now on the threshold of a similar digital revolution. This time, through the rise of computers, mental work is becoming increasingly free. Many of you are familiar with the phenomenon of Moore's Law, or the fact that we approximately half the cost of computing every 18 months, and have done so for about a century. But by redrawing Moore's Law in the units of each brain's computing power, we see that something remarkable will happen around 2025. From that date, the average person on Earth will start to consume more computing power from outside their brain than inside their brain. By the end of the 21st century, at the pace of Moore's Law, that ratio will be about 20,000 times to one in terms of how much more brain power, so to speak, we get from outside versus inside our own brains. That phenomenon requires us to rethink how to prepare students in school today for the world after 2025. For my three young children, I find it dizzying to think about how much change they will have to embrace throughout their lives. It makes it almost impossible today to reliably guess what they will have to know to be successful in the years to come. So instead, I need to ensure that they benefit from an education that prepares them to keep figuring out what to do next on their own. The plummeting cost of physical and mental work, together with the accelerating rate of technical and societal change, has ushered in an astounding degree of volatility in our modern era. There is today an unprecedented difference between the worst and best case scenarios for humanity in the coming century. Over the next hundred years, we might radically extend or contract life expectancy. We might become an interstellar species or suffer extinction. 
in light of what is at stake for humanity, education is one of the few big levers we have to ensure we maintain our global trajectory. Alt School's mission is to make the best education the most available, to ensure that all children reach their potential by making education better, not worse, with global scale. That starts with my own daughter up at the top right. But the best education must extend to all children, not only those most fortunate. Humanity's future rests on the percentage of future adults that are prepared to thrive in future society. Today, it's the stark minority of people that are prepared for the 21st century. We believe it can and must become the vast majority. We have once before in the 19th century transformed the education model serving the majority of students worldwide. In particular, over a relatively brief period of decades, we transitioned from localized schoolhouses providing low quality education. The industrial model, mirroring the efficiencies of the factory, sacrificed flexibility for dramatic improvements in accessibility and quality of education. Over the first half of the 20th century, in the US but also throughout the developed world, we saw dramatic improvement in education attainment. Here you see graduation rates, one measure of such attainment, skyrocket. But towards the second half of the century, by 1970, we saw the industrial model of education plateau with little gains in attainment over the last 50 years. Schools are getting better, but at huge societal and personal cost, we see an education model that's not improving fast enough to keep up with the accelerating improvement in the world or outside of school. And while children spend more and more time in school, their engagement drops from when they enter elementary school to their high school years. The fundamental task of engaging children is to ensure that the challenge and the motivation that each child feels throughout the day is matched. And as best as possible, we can bring these two up together. For children don't learn when they aren't engaged. And the chronic failure of our education system to interest and motivate students is a primary concern. Moreover, by continuing an industrial model of education in a post-industrial world, we risk preparing students en masse for outdated conditions. Increasingly, we are misusing technology to replace human relationships rather than to support real-world learning. It is the frightening irony that most school systems are using computers to teach children to think like computers at precisely the moment in history when we know such thinking is becoming worthless. Each year, the AI-driven robot Denso, seen here, takes the University of Tokyo entrance exam. This year, for the first time, it's beating the average score. Soon, like its counterparts in China and the US, it will beat the best human scores on these tests. The opportunity we have today is to use technology to transformatively support schools. But we must start with great education practices first and then ask how technology can assist. Old school began by opening lab schools, like the one my children attend, to understand the needs and opportunities for technology platforms. We've always employed as many great teachers as engineers. And old school is fairly unique in this way that we have career educators like Devin Vodichka, who was California's superintendent of the year multiple times, working side by side with world-class technologists like Bart Metarata, the distinguished engineer that ran Google.com for more than a decade. Politicians, philanthropists, educators and technologists must collaborate with urgency to drive the next transformation of our global education model. 
We shouldn't be disrupting schools, and we shouldn't be taking technology and throwing it over the wall quickly to achieve gains. Instead, we must enable existing education talent everywhere to provide a post-industrial experience. Mass personalization, not mass production, fits our current era. But it will take time, and it will take an immense amount of research and development to create a platform that can be in the hands of teachers and students, empowering and flexible. Unlike traditional ed tech companies, we're not using a consumer internet playbook where we scale quickly something of limited incremental value. Instead, we approach this problem the way a biotech or clean tech company would. And over many years, focus on research and development to understand the correct approach to building this kind of platform for student-centered learning in classrooms. We began five years ago by understanding how to personalize learning and how to empower students within our own small schools. Now we're working with premier public and private schools to refine our tools and to integrate a critical mass of curriculum and content. In a few years, we'll be ready to scale in the US and abroad to underpin a new ecosystem for post-industrial education. It is atypical for an ed tech company to start by building schools, to have children full time in real world classrooms from age three to 14, and to see what great education looks like before technology is introduced. But behind the scenes, we have educators and engineers working in equal parts, collaborating the way these two different disciplines can in few other organizations to produce tools that let students, teachers, and schools collaborate given the realities of how much they're trying to achieve with how much challenge. Before I get into what we believe is needed to transform education at scale, I want to change gears and look at healthcare, and make a comparison. To do that, I'm going to ask for your participation again. Imagine for a moment that you or your partner are about to give birth, but you have a time machine. And you can choose to undergo this critical procedure in the best hospital from 1900 or the average hospital today. Who in the audience would choose the best hospital from 1900? Who would choose the average hospital today? If you chose the average hospital today, you'd be about 100 times less likely to die in childbirth. That's a pretty good measure of the astounding rate of progress in medicine over the last century. Now let's switch our attention back to schools. Imagine after raising your child, you're now choosing where to send them for high school. You could enroll them with that time machine in the best high school from 100 years ago, or the average school today. Who would choose to go to the best high school from 100 years ago? How about the average high school today? Well, this time, as the hands showed, the opposite is true as in the healthcare system. By pretty much any measure of quality, but clearly looking at graduation rates, you'd be much better off sending your kid to the best school from last century, probably from the last millennia. That's a huge problem for the world, that most schools today are not better by the most important test of where you'd want to send your own child than the best schools of the past. In healthcare, the quality of the individual doctor matters tremendously. There are great hospitals and there are bad hospitals, but all medical care is getting better over time. Why? We'd contend that in healthcare, you have a complete platform, a common foundation for all doctors that pools knowledge and resources. 
a significant fraction of overall spending goes to building that common foundation. And from that expenditure, a significant amount is spent on research and development. Alt School is working to complete that foundation available to all schools to provide a post-industrial student-centered experience. Today, a significant fraction of expenditures, though less than in healthcare, is spent on this foundation that's shared across schools. But what you see is there's very little research and development. That said, largely from outside the education space, investments have allowed connectivity, devices, and content to all radically improve in terms of quality and cost over the last decade. What we need now is to improve that middle layer around software and training, focusing on what education specifically needs, allowing schools to move from the current status where they have to integrate dozens of different service and software providers to where through the type of platform we build, there's a single point of integration. And they can support a diversity of standards, pedagogies, and school models. We think it's actually inevitable that in the future, schools will be able to choose among a small number of very high quality platforms that each bring the benefits of an ecosystem with them. But we want that future to come faster. We believe that this kind of platform will allow students and schools to dramatically benefit from each other at scale. Great education allows students to learn through experience, not just by engaging in the next lesson and the next lesson and the next lesson, but being able to take a step back and to prepare and reflect. Students become more engaged and over time they can take responsibility for their learning. Beyond gaining knowledge and practicing skills, which continues to be essential, children can learn how to learn. Our software needs to support what great schools and great teachers have been doing for a long time. But with the kind of tools that other sectors benefit from, we believe all teachers can support students to understand why and how to learn. We want real physical classrooms, real world learning, to allow children to learn how to learn. To begin with, that means teachers are able to take the best curriculum that already exists and build on it for what their own class requires. They're able to set arcs of study, and they're able to make clear not only to themselves and to students why children are learning, what milestones, academic and non-academic, are being stressed. They need to be able to queue up activities that students can choose from, that scaffold their own learning, but that at the same time match a child's particular non-academic and academic goals. Great teachers do this almost instinctively and automatically, but it takes years and exceptional conditions to pull off this kind of learning experience. The same goes for collaboration, which allows teachers to work together to create a cohesive experience for each student. We need to allow educators and as students get older through their own initiative being able to personalize what goals a student has, what groups they're part of, what activities they do, how they're supported, how they're being evaluated. This is extremely complex to do without support. But relatively simple tools that lay out, for example, for each child, a playlist of activities that they're responsible for, the work that they need to do or redo, generally in groups, generally in the real world, but with this digital representation for them to prepare and reflect and for the teacher to scaffold their experience. As early as age three, 
Children are able to document, to take pictures with tools that make it easy for little hands to document well. These same tools allow teachers to provide meaningful feedback for students to learn as quickly as possible after students engage in a particular activity. Over time, this builds not only the motivation of the child, but their metacognition. But this is extremely difficult for a teacher to coordinate without, again, the kind of workflow support that is commonplace in other industries, but to date has not properly integrated with the classroom practices that teachers already employ. As a child completes any activity, they get both academic and non-academic feedback. We start to formalize what it means to improve in your curiosity or in your collaboration in the same way as in your numeracy or literacy. And because there's a digital representation for all the important things that happen in a child's education, you're able to build this picture of where a child has advanced or struggled. And using machine learning, we're able to make better and better predictions about what would best help a child in non-academic and academic domains. This is flexible to any kind of standards. It's flexible to different curriculum or content, different ways that the classroom is set up, different ways that children learn. But at the base, you have a single fundamental system that, again, allows you to pool knowledge and resources across vastly different schools, not only for the benefit of the student and the teacher, but also for the benefit of administrators who can see where certain classrooms are struggling or doing well, and for parents like myself to get this unbelievable picture of where my child is and how I can be a part of their education experience. And over time, you build up this portfolio of what a child has done and what makes them unique. We had every single one of our graduates get into the high school of their choice last year. And it's largely because they can present themselves in a way to other schools that is impossible to do with paper and pen. Today, we have thousands of students across top schools enjoying a radically more personalized experience in school. As these children get older, they are driving their education experience, not just being taught to. As a result, we see by the best progress-based measures that children in our lab schools advance 20% farther during the school year and 50% more year over year in core subjects like reading, English, and math. Over time, we're building a network, learning what serves particular students best to inform and assist all kinds of schools. To reach millions of children, we must make it easier for educators to learn alongside rather than teach at their students. We must make it commonplace for schools to provide this kind of personalized education within a normal physical classroom community. There isn't a bigger mission we could have than to make the best education the most available. We believe Alt School combines the education expertise, and the world-class technical resources to uniquely complement schools and school systems. And we hope that many of you here who believe in and work in education will see ways in the coming years to work with all school in your school communities. It is daunting to affect the path of our global society. Some in this audience by virtue of your position or your resolve, already have an outsized opportunity. But everyone can start locally, in your families and your community. Particularly here in Dubai, you can provide an example to the rest of the world of what it looks like to use technology to transform the real world sectors that matter the most. Governance, education, healthcare, 
agriculture, housing, and beyond. Over this century, we will see human success continue to skyrocket or come crashing down. We can each work actively towards that best outcome. Otherwise, we're letting others decide the world that our children inherit. Thank you.